first part of this video, I'm going to be making some iron 2 sulfate. And to do that, I'm going to need uh, three things. First is just some distilled water. The second thing we're going to need is some sulfuric acid. This is drain cleaner acid. About 25 milliliters, or by weight, it's 43.6 grams. And this is the, uh, the amount determined by stoichiometry with about a 5% excess of acid. And I weighed my seal wool and I had uh, uh, 22.1 grams of steel wool. This is uh, uh, 0000 grade of steel wool, which means it's, it's pretty fine. And it's just, uh, doesn't have any uh, anything added to it. It's just uh, steel wool, no cleanser or no grease, grease on it or anything. So first thing I'll do is just put some water in the beaker. I'll start out with uh, about 150 milliliters of water. I may have to add more later. And then I'm going to add the acid. So this will produce some uh, hydrogen gas as the reaction proceeds. So I will uh, I will cover with this beaker just to prevent any splashing. So I'll start off with just one piece that I've cut off with the larger pieces of steel wool. Throw that in, and I will turn on some heat. This should be self-heating once it gets going. And then once it gets closer to completion, uh, it may need additional heat as well. As you can see, it's already starting to bubble. So it doesn't look like it's going to get out of control. So I will add a couple more pieces just to get this done. So here's a little bit more information about the drain cleaner that I used. Uh, it's actually called Amazing Liquid Fire. And uh, my research indicated that it's about 93.2% sulfuric acid. And uh, as you can see, the reaction is going along quite nicely. And... Uh, I think I'll take this opportunity to add a couple more pieces of steel wool. Maybe give that a stir. At this point, I think it's self-heating. I'll just turn the heat off for now. As the reaction slows, as the acid is used up, I'll probably have to turn the heat back on. So it's been about a half hour, and the reaction has slowed considerably. So I'd like to turn on some heating now. And I'll give, a, give the beaker a little stir. There's still some undissolved steel wool, but much of it has already reacted. The last, uh, the last remaining bit always goes very slow, so the heat will help. So now the reaction has finished, and I've um, brought it in from the greenhouse 
back down to the lab and it's been allowed to set overnight and as you can see um, it has a lot of dark uh, carbon in it so I'll be filtering that out uh, fortunately I don't see any crystals in there which means that I did add enough water so that's good otherwise I would have had to add water and redissolve the crystals before I filter it so I'll go ahead and do the filtering now So it looks like my filter paper is clogged and it's nearly stopped. It looks like what happened when I, uh, part of the problem is it started to crystallize once I dumped it into the filter paper. So uh, I'm going to see if I can't uh, get it to go. By, I've had, got another 100 milliliters of hot water here. Let's see if that doesn't redissolve some of those crystals get things going through the filter again. So the addition of the uh, hot water worked out nicely. After only a few minutes everything has gone through the filter. And we have this residue as you can see. So I'll be filtering this again. And uh, this time I'm going to use this funnel with a little bit of cotton tucked down in the bottom of the neck and I find that cotton removes finer particles than the uh, just a coffee filter so I'll go ahead and do that So now that that's finished filtering, I will uh, be heating that up and reducing the volume down. Um, according to the uh, theoretical amount that I should have is about 60 grams of the iron sulfate. And uh, checking the solubility, uh, it should require about 200 milliliters to get it down to the saturation and I want to go below that so the crystals will form so I'll probably go down to about 150 milliliters and then let it cool down and the crystals should form and I am going to put in a stir bar uh, uh, maybe that'll help it evaporate more quickly and also prevent bumping So I'm just over 100 milliliters in volume, and I can see now that um, crystals are already trying to come out of, out of solution and form, so it's saturated even at boiling. So I'm going to turn the heat off and let it cool down. I'm not so interested in getting nice big crystals right now because I'm going to use this product in the next step of this experiment. So... All I want to do is just get it out of solution and into crystalline form.
Okay, what you just saw was uh, what we call bumping, and that's when uh, salt uh, settles on the bottom, you get a superheated layer of liquid, then it suddenly uh, boils and uh, creates this effect. It's not really desirable at all, and as you can see, I put an additional ring around here to keep the beaker from actually bouncing off of the uh, hot plate. So, I am trying to get this done uh, in a hurry, but I, I think I'm going to be forced to reduce the heat. Um, and, because uh, I think this is just not a good situation to be in. So, now that everything's cooled down and... Um, it's sort of a bunch of wet small crystals in there so I'm going to spread that this out on this uh, piece of white paper with a paper towel underneath and hopefully it'll finish drying So I'll probably let that set at least overnight, maybe occasionally stirring it around and see how it turns out. So here's the iron sulfate after it's uh, dried. I believe it's dried. So uh, I'll weigh this up and see how much I got. Looks like about 104 grams, and uh, so theoretically, um, I should have had 60.1 grams of iron sulfate anhydrous. This is the heptahydrate, so adding on the extra weight for the seven water molecule uh, water molecules, it sh I should have had a theoretical amount of 110 grams. So I know there's obviously going to be some losses through the filtering and the drying. So this seems quite reasonable. So uh, I'll say this is good at this point, and I'll go on to the next step in making the Moore's salt. If you want to do this yourself, um, here's the... Uh, amounts scaled down to one gram so iron sulfate uh, if one gram of the heptahydrate is used you need 0.4753 grams of the ammonium sulfate so with that you can scale it to whatever amount you need so more salt is simply the combination of equal molar amounts of iron sulfate and ammonium sulfate. Now, ammonium sulfate is easy enough to make, but you can also buy it very easily. It's sold in garden stores as a fertilizer, and if you uh, if you buy it as fertilizer, it's probably going to look something like this. It comes in these little prills, but it's not very clean. Um, you can see it has sort of a brown tint. So here's here's some ammonium sulfate after I've uh, dissolved it in water, filtered it, and then recrystallized it. And this will be much more pure. So this is easy to get, but you may have to do a little work to get it cleaned up so we can use it for this experiment. All right, so as I just showed, 
Um, I had 103.93 grams of the iron sulfate uh, heptahydrate and one, one molecular weight of iron sulfate is 392.13. <clears throat> so you divide those two <clears throat> and you get uh, that we have 0.265 moles here of iron sulfate. So I actually need 0.265 moles of ammonium sulfate to add with that. Now the molecular weight of ammonium sulfate is 132.07. Multiply that by 0.265, which means I need 35 grams of ammonium sulfate. And I have already weighed that out here. This is 35 grams. So I'll be mixing these, these two together, dissolving it in water, Letting, then letting that recrystallize and getting the more salt crystals. Alright, so I'll just add some distilled water to the iron sulfate. The only reason I dried it out was so I could weigh it accurately, otherwise I wouldn't have even had to have uh, dry it into a powder. So I'm going to start off with a fairly small amount of water that looks like about 175 milliliters uh, along with the powder. I probably will add some more water in a minute. So I'm going to put in a stir bar See if I can get that to go. I also turn on the heat, that'll help it dissolve. There we go. I'll wait till that dissolves before I add the ammonium sulfate. Okay, so it looks like the uh, iron sulfate has dissolved, so now I'll be adding the ammonium sulfate. I'll turn the stirring back on, and you won't really see any kind of reaction when you do this. It's just that when, they, when it crystallizes, they uh, form a double compound in the crystalline structure. So once those have, uh, once that has dissolved, I will go ahead and filter this all again, make sure everything's nice and clean, then we'll let it crystallize. So it looks like everything is dissolved, so now I can go ahead and do the filtration step. setup I have here is a coffee filter on top and then below that another funnel with cotton in the neck so I'll kind of do a double two-stage filtration and an attempt to save some time. So my filter filtering has gotten really slow and I can see some crystals already forming in the bottom of the beaker. What I think is happening is that it's crystallizing in, in the filter paper and clogging it up. So I'm going to add a 50 milliliters of boiling water that should help get it going again.
Okay, so the filtration is finally finished. And uh, I did have to add a little more water. Now I'm almost up to 300 milliliters total volume here. Um, some crystals have formed already. Um, I'd like to redissolve those and hopefully get some larger ones to grow. Um, so I'll be dissolving those again back into solution. I think the filtration, even though it took quite a while, was worth it because now that it looks very clear. So that's not going to work. Anyway, I'll get that dissolved back into solution. And then I'll, I'm going to pour it out into this glass dish and uh, let it set for quite a while. Hopefully I'll so get some nice It's all dissolved now. So into the flat dish it goes. in my refrigerator here so we'll see how it's doing. Got some crystallization going in there. There's still a ways to go. I could harvest what I got and then take a look at that. I think I'll evaporate some more of the water out of that and then repeat. So here we are after about four hours of drying and everything looks like it's nice and dry. So uh, I'll just temporarily store this in this beaker. solution that I reduced down uh, is back in this evaporating dish and starting to grow some crystals. I think I'll put that back in the refrigerator and let that set overnight.
So here's a little bit of the more salt solution that has not uh, yet evaporated and crystallized. But I'm not going to wait for that to finish. I want to end, end this video. So I'll just be setting this aside somewhere and uh, let it set for uh, a long time. And come back to that later. So right now here's what I recovered of the crystallized more salt. So I'm going to be weighing that and see how much I got.